Hi, welcome to lesson 11. And in this lesson, we're going to be uh, developing the strumming patterns for Live Forever, both on acoustic and electric. I'm going to be showing you how to sort of vary them and improvise uh, your, your own strumming patterns. And then later on, we're going to be developing those, uh, those power chords that we learnt uh, last week. And just beginning to play a power chord exercise, I'm going to get you to play a power, power chord exercise to prepare you for, for the uh, uh, upcoming songs. Just before we do get on though, I just want to just give you some words of encouragement because if you've got this far, we're almost we're a couple of lessons short of being halfway through the course. If you've got this far, then absolutely well done for, for your perseverance and dedication uh, because it's not easy, as I've said before, uh, the guitar is a very physical instrument to learn. But if you've, uh, if you've persevered this far, then you should be finding now that those, uh, those Chord changes will be getting easier. Your fingers are going to be moving uh, more quickly around around the fretboard. Your scales will be getting quicker, and um, and so it, it's it's all going to become easier as as you go. And there and therefore your playing is going to become all the more enjoyable. We've got a, 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 quite a few songs that we've done as well. So you're building up a repertoire of, of of songs that you can play. And like I said, it just becomes all the more enjoyable when when your fingers are are moving and you're playing you're playing better. So hopefully. You're, you're, you're improving, uh, keep, uh, keep persevering, keep, keep that dedication, and most, most importantly, keep enjoying your playing. Okay, I just played through the verses of the choruses there, and just to really um, emphasise how loose this this strumming pattern can be and how varied you can make it. Now, what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to simplify it right down to a, a basic. Uh, well, no, it's not. Nothing's ever simple on guitar, but a basic strumming pattern that you can uh, begin as as a as a basis for the rest of the song. Okay, so if we if we if we strip it right back to a a simple counting format, we can do two down strums, one, two, three, and four. Now you can play that strumming pattern all the way through the song. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Apart from on the C's and the D's, where we really have to just play two down strums, on each one, because the change comes halfway through the bar, half a bar on C and half a bar on D. So you can play that strumming pattern, it'll work perfectly well all the way through the song. But really the point of today's lesson is to just get a little bit more confident in developing your own strumming patterns and, and varying those. And if when you listen to the song, uh, Noel doesn't play the same strumming pattern um, every, every verse, it always varies. And, and when it comes to the instrumental part, that's when he's really kind of Improvising and going and going for uh, and going for a, a louder, a, a louder sound and a louder strumming pattern through through that section. So we can vary that, and I'll, go, I'll again I'll try and keep it as straightforward as I can just to put a varied little pattern. So we can, if you listen to the song, we can hear a little quick upstroke before they up and the down strums and they, and he kind of plays that quite a lot through through the particularly through the first couple of verses and indeed we could actually replace the up and down strums for down for down strums after that quick upstroke so another example one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. 
So again, the the down the downstrokes just give it a, a slightly different feel to the to the smooth up and down strums that I, that I, I played previously. Now, again, because the song's slow, so slow, we can double up again rather than playing quavers. One, two, three, and four. If you want to experiment with doubling the speed of your strumming again above the the quavers then you can also do that. So we, we, from there we get this. Now, in musical terms, when we double up the quavers again, we, we get 16th notes or semi-quavers. Okay, and we, when, we count, when we count semi-quavers, we count them as one anana, two anana, three anana, four anana. Let me just explain the counting uh, pattern for, for doubling up again on the strumming, which we can do when songs are particularly slow. So we've got one, two, three, four. That's the down strums. Then when we double up on the quavers, we have one and two and three and four. And again, I'll explain this with the metronome in a, in a while. And then when we double up again, one anana, two anana, three anana, four anana. One anana, two anana, three anana, four anana. Okay, so we've got four strums per beat, doubling, doubling up again into what we call 16th note strums or semi quaver strums. So, again, if we put that with the strumming pattern, one, two, three, four. Those are notes on the beat. One and two and three and four. And quavers, two per beat, and then doubling up again. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Okay, once again to, to explain that uh, in context with the metronome to help us, um, or to help me explain to you the, uh, the the timing for those strums. Here we go again, setting the metronome once again at sixty beats per minute. Okay, so sim single beat strums. Quaver strums. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And like I said, certain songs that are really slow paced, we can double up again into sixteenth or semi quaver strums, like so. So put, putting that in, in into the song then, we can put all those strumming patterns into each, each part of the song and it'll all work perfectly well. So hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate that now. So the point is really here, we can make that strumming as, as basic or as, as, as spacious. We can leave a lot of, space is also important in music. So when you, again, when you listen to the track, Noel's kind of really keeping a quiet, really quiet for the first couple of verses. And then 
later on Later on becomes louder. Now, in musical terms, those differences between loud and, and soft or, or quiet and loud are called dynamics. And we'll be talking a bit more about dynamics as we go as we go th further forward. But for now, it's, it, dynamics are important in songs because they give the song a feel or a sense of feeling. So nice and quiet. And then we just kind of Build up. Back to quiet again. So it's loud. And it's all down to how how hard we brush or how soft we brush the strings and and that creates the, the loud and the soft dynamics there. So see how you go with that. Like I said, you can keep it as basic or as, as experimental and improvised as, as you feel comfortable with. Okay, enjoy the song. And I'm going to be doing a, a, an electric version of that now. And, uh, and so we've got, the, we've got both versions there for you to, to play with. <clears throat> okay, so quickly, I'm just going to run through the, um, the, the, the strumming on, on, an, on the electric version. Um, the strumming patterns are, are exactly the same as we've as we've just explained on the on the acoustic apart from two things the the electric version is played a lot quicker I'm not saying you have to play it that quick to begin with but the the um the original version by oasis is is uh, a lot quicker so the 16th strums that I was talking about might not be possible at that you don't need them you don't need the 16th note strums on electric the amp your amplifier is going to do all the work in terms of sound so if you're playing on acoustic, you can fill those, uh, you can fill the spaces in with the 16th note strums. Uh, on electric, your amp's going to do the work. So nice lot of drive. And that drive sustains the chord through. Um, and so you don't need you don't need those excessive strumming patterns on electric. So, but the strumming, the, the, the slow strumming, the quavers uh, and the up strums, the quick up strums that I explained earlier can all apply to the, to, to the electric. So I'm just going to play a quick version through. And a slightly different part on the F chord on the electric version is a, an individual pick of each string on the chord with your little finger and you pink it on the, um, t the top string on the third fret. Uh, and what the guitarist is doing... <laughs> Then they're picking down the individual notes of the chord, which it, 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 again, the musical term is an arpeggio. Picking the individual notes of the chord there. So that's another new way of playing, which we're going to be exploring again a lot more in the coming weeks. But you can give that a go. You can either strum the chord as I just did or play it as a little arpeggio there. Notice my picking pattern for that was I'm picking down the strings till I get to the highest, the top string, and then I'm picking up and coming back with up picks. So that's the rule that we follow with the arpeggios. Down to the top string and then up and 
two up picks as well. And if you practice that, just a little arpeggio there, that'll stand you in good stead for the, uh, for the, for the tunes that we're going to be doing later on. Another little technique there. Okay, on to some power chord work now. And and just moving on from last week's lesson when I was showing you the, the, the shape of the power chords and how to position your fingers. I'll just re revisit that so 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 you uh, just to recap and summarize your first finger is taking what we call the root of the power chord um its technical name is a, is a five chord so my finger at the fifth fret my first finger is on an a and so therefore the the root of the chord is an a and and therefore the name of the chord is an a5 my third finger then is going on the highest string the fifth string two frets Two frets higher, and we play those bottom two strings together like so. Doesn't matter if your first finger touches the other strings. In fact, that's an advantage. You don't need to arch, bridge your finger over. Keep it nice and flat where you can. And thumb, as again, the ball of your thumb flat against the back of the neck, supporting the card shape. Now, we're just going to practice some simple movements up and down the neck. Now, we're going to start on a... A B, a B5. So first finger at the seventh fret, third finger on the ninth fret on the fifth string. Get a nice bit of crunch on your on your guitar set. It's a nice bit of drive and gain. And we're going to practice moving down two frets at a time and then back up. So we're going to start on B5. Going to get four, four strums on each one, just down stabs. One, two. Moving down to an A5. And then down to the third fret, which is a G5. Then moving back up to A5. And finish on a B5. Now, a couple of things to watch out for when you're uh, executing these power chords, because you want a good, nice, clean uh, ring, and, and like I said, nice, powerful uh, ring to those chords. Now, sometimes if, if you're gripping the chord not quite right, you could have a tendency to pull, this, pull that bottom string down, which is creating a bend, which what happens when you bend a string, it raises the pitch of the note. So that note will change and it'll clash with this string underneath. So, so that's an exaggerated version. If, if the string's been pulled down or gripped in the wrong way, the chord won't sound, sound too, too clever. So strictly pressure on the string, holding the string down, first finger nice and flat. I'll run through it nice and slow. Relaxing, releasing your grip, moving down a fret. Two frets, should I say, or a tone. Down to A5, down another tone, two frets to G5. Back up two frets to A5. And back where you started on B5. Now, we can also play power chords with the root on the fifth string. So that means you're going to hold the fifth string down with the fourth string underneath with your third finger. Okay, and, and therefore we play just those two, those two strings again. Now, we've got to try and avoid either hitting that bottom string or you just got to try and mute it, just touch the string with your first finger. So that if you do accidentally hit it, strike that string, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll mute. Um, and again, we'll do the same, um, same exercise, this time with the root on the, on the A string. 
or the fifth string. So my first finger is at the seventh fret again on an E. So this is an E5. <laughs> Moving down a tone to D5. First finger is now at the fifth fret. Moving down again a tone to the third fret, C5. <laughs> Moving back up a tone to D5. And then back up again where we started to E5. So, so that's your, your initial uh, practice exercise for the power chords. Practice them running up and down those three chord shapes or chord, uh, chord names. B5, A5, G5, back up. And then on the fifth string, through E, D, C, D, and back to E. Four, four strums on each one. Okay, so you, as far as your practice schedule is concerned, for this lesson then, uh, it should be as follows. Begin with your scales, using the, using the metronome as, as I've shown you. Even though we've done a lot of strumming and chord work uh, over the last couple of lessons, keep, um, keep, keep beginning your practice schedule with these scales to get you in the zone, get you warmed up. Using the metronome to always push for, for a quicker speed if you, if you can and if you're ready. Then <clears throat> working on the, uh, the, the new song, Live Forever, great Oasis uh, classic. Uh, improvising your strumming, start with the, the strumming pattern that I've shown you, then try and take yourself away from that and, and improvise a little bit more uh, differing strumming patterns. And then on with the power chord exercise that we've done, uh, this lesson to prepare us for next week's song, new song that we're going to be learning uh, to, to coincide with the power card work, which is Lonely Boy via the Black Keys. Okay, have fun, keep enjoying your guitar, and I look forward to seeing you next time.